I'm allowed to talk about anything that's not a police personnel record. Um, I'm not told that by the leadership of the board. As a matter of fact, I'm told just the opposite, that I must use their talking points, that I must never speak for the board, that I must never disclose any information that I hear in a meeting, whether or not it's about police personnel records. And that's part of the problem with this board. It's run by a very close group of people who perpetuate their friends into leadership. Um, my experience with them is if you at all questioned how things were run, if or not they followed the rules, if or not they made them up as they went along, um, you were sort of tagged and uh, you were put in a position of uh, impotence on the board. They would flagrantly call you out. You can't speak like that. You can't ask that question. Uh, there was a lot of bullying going on. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm a pretty um, secure person in myself. I don't think that I react to bullying overtly and in a way that, you know, I, I, that some people might. I'm certainly not a church mouse in the sense of uh, I'm going to ask questions. And I felt that that was my role on the board. So pretty early on, even when I was a prospective member, when I would uh, meet with a team, we're assigned to teams. And there's usually three people on a team. There's 23 members of the board. There are leaders that don't do cases and haven't done cases for some time in the case of leadership I was with. Um, and they, they put people onto uh, teams and uh, you meet with teams, you get a case in your drawer which has already been sort of investigated and a determination made by the internal affairs folks. They give you some materials that they looked at, sometimes not all the materials they looked at, uh, and they have a conclusion. And your job as a team is to review what they did uh, and to determine if or not the police officers were um, unfounded, sustained, exonerated, or uh, not sustained in the allegations that were made against them by the complainant. What do all those words mean then? What does it come down to? <laughs> um, well, it depends on who you ask. According to the law, exonerated means the police officer followed the policy and procedures and the law. Uh, according to the city attorney, you're not allowed to be concerned about the law. And as an attorney, whenever I did get concerned at their interpretation, I was told, sit down, shut up, you're not allowed to use your experience. Um, it, it became somewhat problematic and it probably led to my demise as a board member. Um, but I, that doesn't relieve me of the duty to fight for a fair Citizens Review Board, and that's what I feel why I should still be interested in this. Um, I haven't served on this board for two years, but I see things like this. I see that the same issues are still going on, and actually I think the grand jury report was right on in calling out the things that they needed to call out, and um, I don't see anything that's changed. You know, I. As a matter of fact, I think it's gotten worse. How would you know that being off the board? Well, I mean, on their website, they've posted the new executive director's job description. That people will be very interested in knowing, I think, that when they voted in a citizens review board, that that board now is selected, recruited, trained, and supervised by a city employee. And that's the executive director's job description. Um, and there's no delegation that delineates how she does that. Uh, Danelle Scarborough has been the executive director for the time that I served on the board. Um, initially, I think the first year Patrick Hunter was. And uh, Patrick was rift in a budget cut, and they had Danelle come over, and she had half time on the, on the Human Relations Council and half time on the, on the uh, Citizens Review Board, SDED. And uh, during that time, everything has sort of been consolidated. All the decisions, all the supervisory duties, everything has been consolidated into her job description. And I think that there's a problem with that. Citizens Review Board imp sort of implies that citizens have a say. 
when it's actually friends of a city employee, it's a little bit different. Uh, if you read the job description, the, the people you call for questions about the job is risk management. Um, those are the same people that defend the city and on lawsuits that when their officers get in trouble and, and somebody thinks they have a lawsuit, the lawsuit, the claim, goes to risk management. Risk management at one point during the tenure while I served on the board, whenever anyone would file a claim, apparently um, they would pull the citizen's review complaint and hold it for long, long times. Um, there was a time, and I think this was just after I got off the board, that suddenly I would be talking to friends that were on the board and, and they would say, oh, we've got seven, eight cases now. And I thought that was very odd, but I'd, I'd look back and I think that they pulled those cases back from risk management at some point. And, um, you know, I don't have any proof of that, so it's just, you know, putting two and two together. But a lot of those cases we would get that, that there was no time left on the clock. You have a year clock from the time the incident is complained about to impose the discipline on a police officer. So we'd get a case and we could ask back from IA, how come you didn't interview this person or how come you didn't interview that person? Um, sometimes we got, yes, we'll go do that. Sometimes we got, we didn't think it was necessary. You got what you got, that's it. I, I think that most of the investigations, they tried to find facts and they tried to talk to people. But at the same time, there was a very early on sort of a rush to judgment about what really happened. So you could see sometimes where, especially if an officer came in, and we got the tapes, we got, uh, as part of our file, we got tapes of the interviews with the officers. And um, there's a practice, and my practice was, I take the, the written report of the inv interview that was given to me by the IA investigator. I sit down, I push the button, I play the tape. And quite often, what was on the tape was not at all reflected what was in the written part of it. And so I made it a practice of continuing to listen to the tapes that way, and I would make little notes. Um, all of your notes are kept by IA. You don't get to take them with you. Everything that's, uh, that you put on that file stays with the file. So, um, you know, I don't know who gets to review that. Um, but it was apparent that as soon as the case was heard and voted on, those were gone. So, you know, we weren't allowed to, to keep any of those things. But there were a lot of things that I saw were different. And there's a lot of leading questions. If you're talking to an officer and you're an investigator, I mean, you're a trained investigator. Any attorney knows how to ask a question that you're not giving away the answer. So, so you thought that this person was um, going to attack you or you thought he had weapons, is that what you're saying, officer? And, I mean, to me, why is that necessary? If you're trying to do an unbiased investigation, and I don't think that was very common, but it happened. And we would continually say to the IA lieutenants, you know, this investigation was sort of shoddy. You know, what are you doing about the leading questions and things? And, okay, we got it, we'll take care of it, but we never heard back what happened. And we would continue to see these occasions, sometimes by the same investigators. But I think they try to do a good job, but it's just they make their decision way early on, you know, who's right and who's not in the situation. Video cameras are everywhere, and th that's really important information, usually. Uh, it's it's right at the time that things happened. I mean, it makes sense. People involved in these situations sometimes act out of adrenaline. Uh, police officers act out of adrenaline in some ways, in spite of their training. And they have immense training in how to remain calm and how to take, how, how to look at things objectively. But sometimes they come upon a scene and, uh, you know, they instantly make a decision of who is the bad guy and who's not. So uh, the video evidence is real important. And most commercial stores will tape over it in about three weeks unless a police officer asks for it. And, you know, why a citizen can't ask for it, I think that's a problem. But. Uh, what's your take on, th apparently the police now uh, will be fitted with personal video cameras and used in, in most cases uh, like this one? I think it has a utility, and I also think it can be abused. I mean, uh, you know, 
do the police officers have the on-off switch and is it conveniently when we're taping when things go my way? I mean, I see the same thing in the recordings. Um, you know, often we would have a recording where the guy that's being interviewed would say, you know, like I told you before, <laughs> which isn't on tape. So if you have a pre-interview, a practice run-through, and then you click on the tape, then I think you, you abuse it. You know, you're only getting then things that go your way. Um, if you have it that you have to run it all the time, then, uh, you know, when you go into a house, is that a violation of that person's privacy? I also work as a defense counsel sometimes, and I can tell you that I know those officers have to deal with my clients when they're ugly and drunk and abusive. And um, those are going to be horrible for me to have to deal with in court. But I think it's more fair. Uh, overall, I, I bet you that um, the officers are more courteous to people. Um, sometimes a, an officer is just having a bad day, and, and they have horrible things that they have to deal with on a regular basis. Um, and most of them in SDPD are good cops. Um, and, and to brush this whole department is not fair. Uh, it's very difficult to make a decision, whether you're a police officer, whether you're, whether you're a person on the CRB reviewing it. Um, and, you know, often I saw one side the other way, where we only heard the police officer's side. Um, in this case, it would have been helpful to have the woman and the guy companion who ran over the guy who hit him, um, who assaulted him, obviously. I think... Um, you know, sometimes the best, the best plan is to get all that information, but it's not always possible. What you read on the, in the paper, what you see on the news, is not the whole story usually.